go ahead and start recording. All right, welcome everybody to the trade recap and market, or the market recap and trade reviews. Sorry. <laughs> red, I fucked up today, lost 2% on my funded. All right. So those of you that are red, actually everybody who took a trade, send the fucking trades in the chat while I market recap, okay? We're going to go over everything right now. All right, today was an absolute crazy, crazy day, especially in the PM session here. Right after lunch, we absolutely melted. Um, <laughs> was not expecting this fucking move right here. This move was crazy, bro. This move was absolutely insane. And the funny part is that um, I wanted to go short <laughs> literally at the top, and I was going to alert it, but I was like, nah, let me, uh, you know, let me just stick to my, you know, not trading. I don't want to trade today. And then this happens. Um, unfortunate, but totally fine. We got NFP tomorrow. Um, and we ended up taking out. Oh, no, no, we didn't. Never mind. I thought we ended up taking out that low. But uh, the focus is going to be, I think, these lows tomorrow. Anyways. All right. So market recap. So I, uh, if you guys had watched the outlook yesterday that I had posted um, right here, right? On the weekly, the weekly uh, quarterly theory right here between Q3 and Q4, we had a bearish SMT divergence um, in Asia session. Okay, so we had a bearish SMT divergence to start out the day. Now I told you guys in the outlook that you know when we have an SMT like this, um, we usually, in theory, it should reverse to go and take out the SMT that caused you know the the most recent SMT. So for this example, since we had it here we would go down and reverse it to down here since we had an S&T divergence between quarter two and quarter three. And that's exactly what we did later. But this bearish S&T got invalidated um, as we you know, opened up in New York session, okay? So I told you guys in the outlook yesterday and the recap yesterday video that you know these fair value gaps were gonna be the make it or break it for market to go higher, okay? And the target for today were these relative equal highs. Now, these relative equal highs got hit in pre-market okay so when i seen that i was like dude i don't like okay so like what i was expecting for thursday i was not expecting asia session to do this right here this fuck shit right here i was expecting asia session to go lower and maybe make an smt divergence between quarter three and quarter four of the weekly cycle was not expecting this and it was totally fine that it did this right because that one hour fair value got sent price to go up and there was confluences for price to go up in the early morning, and I'll show you guys where. But you know me, I don't really like taking uh, trades in pre-market. Uh, but you know, I'll show you guys why this ended up happening here. So in pre-market, we had a bullish SMT on the daily on quarter one and quarter two down here, right? So we had uh, NQ take out the low, and ES and YM did not. Okay. So this was in London session. I know, I think printer had caught the bottom here. So super, super nice stuff. I think he put a limit here at the CISD on this 15 minute unicorn. Ended up getting hit. There was a no wick candle right here on the 15 minute. So I off, oh, never mind. It did have a wick, never mind. There was a uh, 15 minute unicorn right here that I think printer had bottom ticked. Um, but yeah, this was the bottom here at three in the morning. I always tell you guys, the low or high of day usually comes in in London session at three in the morning. That's usually where it forms. And if you look at the candle here, it formed at three in the morning. Uh, and then we just kind of went sideways for the rest of the early morning going into NY session. Now, we had that bullish SMT on the daily, and then we had a 90 minute cycle uh, bullish SMT right here. So between quarter two and quarter three. So or actually quarter one and quarter two. So this low right here on YM had gotten swept, actually these two lows. And then on ES, right, ES and NQ, they did not sweep it. Um, and then we had the unemployment news and that just sent price all the way back up to here, taking out the daily objective early morning and pre-market. So you guys know that I dislike whenever price does that because when price does that, the morning is usually, it, it'll just, It'll just do something like this, and it's not really like worth trading in the morning. It'll usually just go sideways or something, make a move, and then, you know, PM session. That's when stuff cleans up, and and damn, did it clean up in PM session? But uh, there was a good trade to take here. There was a good trade to take here. There was another good trade to take there. Uh, so you know, I got off of the charts in the morning. I wasn't even paying attention to anything here that was going on in the morning. I just went to the, went to the gym and I was just busy. I, I was just not paying attention to this. I was perfectly fine 
with not taking any trades in the morning because of the objectives being taken in the early morning. But I'll show you guys where you could have took a trade if you wanted to here in the morning. Uh, and in my opinion, it was it was a pretty decent trade. Uh, so if you go to the one minute here, right, right when market open, where did market open? Market open right here. Okay. So you had market open and then you formed an SMT divergence here at these highs. NQ had made a higher high. ES and YM did not make that higher high with NQ right here. If I hover my mouse over this high, you can see that YM made a lower high. ES made a lower high. NQ made a higher high. We had nice displacement down. Nice little break of structure there. This fair value gap ended up holding. So you could have shorted there down into uh, the 15 minute fair value gap. And obviously that played out for a little bit. And on the lower time frames, you started getting that market maker buy model, right? You started going down, consolidation, 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 another leg down, consolidation, boom, 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 take out range lows, and then you got that market maker buy model, right? I know it's a shitty market maker buy model drawing, but you had the market maker buy model going, right? You had displacement to the downside, a fair value gap. You started forming your bearish PDA raise with SMT, came down to equilibrium of this leg. Now, what I was looking for here uh, later in the morning, about an hour into market open, was I wanted to see YM. Here, let me go to this current price action. I wanted to see YM take out these lows, and it got really close to doing so. Because if we would have took out these lows here while NQ was pulling back, I would have liked longs a lot more. I know some of you guys had caught in, had caught those uh, longs right here into the OTE. There was a bunch of confluence to go long here. However, I just wanted my, you know, my SMT here in the um, quarter two lows and then quarter three. That would have been a nice daily bullish SMT right there. Um, so that's what I was waiting for here in the morning. It got very, very close. As you guys can see here, it just swept that short term low and then it reversed and everything else reversed. And yeah, that's pretty much what I was waiting for there. But uh, right there, that, that probably would have been a pretty good short if you guys would have took that right there. If you guys would recognize the market maker sell model into a market maker buy model going into the one hour fair value gap. And then if you notice here, uh, right here, right, right here, this was the 11 a.m. one hour candle open. So remember, if you're looking at ranges... If you're looking at ranges, right? Let me go ahead and take this out. If you're looking at these ranges, this is the one hour candle open, right? This is where you would use the open high low or open low high close um, concept, right? Of the next one hour candle. Okay, so you have the 11 a.m. candle open here. You form your short term high right there. I believe you have SMT right here. And then that short term SMT there on the lower time frame sends price down to sweep these uh, loans, lows, these range lows right here into the CE of that one hour fair value gap. This is where your turtle soup happens. Uh, however, you don't have actually, no, you don't have any like higher time frame SMT, but you do have all those higher time frame bullish PDA rays aligning. Plus, you have the open, the low of the one hour candle, and then you got the, the high of the one hour candle forming up here. And then you have the close right there. So you could use the open, low, high, close concept right here, just at this 11 a.m. Um, 11 a.m. one hour candle open. You look for that SMT to send it to the low to expect or anticipate the one hour low. You get it right here. And then I know most of you guys had gotten in, like I think around here off this one minute unicorn right there. But this was a nice turtle soup, nice continuation. Went all the way up to here. Unfortunately, NQ did not sweep that high. However, you did get it on ES though. So if I go back to the 15 minute chart, show you guys this. I go back to the 15 minute chart, right? You had ES sweeping. Let me show you guys this. You had ES sweeping the high, but NQ and YM did not. And then right around where ES has swept it, you had the start of Q4. Okay. So if this is, if we're looking at the daily cycle, right? This looks like, in my opinion, this looks like X, A, M, and then D, distribution on the daily cycle, right? X, A, M, D profile. So as soon as quarter four starts, you have ES taking that high, and then we form a bearish SMT on the daily cycle right there, right? ES makes a higher high, NQ makes a lower high, so does YM. 
So we see a cracking correlation right there. Okay, so this is where once you get that higher time frame SMT, let's say on the daily, which we do, this is where you start looking for a lower time frame SMT to confirm that higher time frame SMT, which you got right here. All right, let me go in the one minute. So this is where I started where I was scoping for a trade. And <laughs> oh my God, dude, I don't even, dude, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to tweak out here because this was, this was a big day, man. Um, so you got that lower time frame bearish SMT right here. Okay. You got it right here with NQ sweeping this high. Boom. Yes. Making a lower high. YM also making a lower high and NQ had swept this. NQ does not need to sweep this. This is where your stop would have been. Um, cause if NQ would have swept this, it would have been invalidated. Actually it would have been, it wouldn't have been invalidated. However, you don't want to see NQ sweeping that, but because you have that lower time frame SMT, right? You don't want to see NQ sweep that you want to see NQ keep that lower time frame SMT to confirm the higher time frame SMT between the quarters, right? You had it on the micro cycles right here, right? Plus on the, on the, uh, the micros, you had it on the quarter one and then quarter three. Okay. So you had that SMT right there to confirm that higher time from SMT. Boom. Now, this is where I went short right here. I was like, fuck, I'm going to alert this to the group. But then I was like, nah, I, I just went short. And then I got out once it, once it flushed down, I made like 300 bucks profit. And I wanted to alert this fucking trade because <laughs> of all the uh, SMTs there. But I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to trade. It just, it's moving super slow. I don't know. You know, we have a bunch of imbalances. Uh, I was like, you know, I'll just, I'll just wait till tomorrow. Fuck it. And then, yeah, you see, <laughs> you see what happened after. Jeez. Uh, I think this was like a 400 point move. But again, guys, look, you have the higher time from SMT. Is everything making sense? Does everything make sense here? You have the higher time from SMT right there. Boom. Right. Bearish SMT with ES. Uh, it's between the quarters and then you get the lower time from SMT to confirm the higher time from SMT. And then boom. And yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a news driving dump. I think so. Yeah. Because we had fed speakers at around this time too. So that, that had accelerated the move. Now I was not expecting this to happen. Like I was not expecting this. Like this was a violent drop. This was a, a literal waterfall. Right. If you were to put a picture of a waterfall next to this, this is what you get. This is a waterfall move. Like this is just, it just took out two days of price action in one, like in like two hours. Okay. This was a, what is this from the very top? Let's see turtle shoot this. This was, dude, this is crazy. This is a 500 point move in about three and a half hours, about three hours, 500 point move. Okay. Just using quarterly theory and SMT. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, and tomorrow, what I'm expecting for tomorrow is, oh man, it's kind of hard. Like I don't have a bias going into tomorrow. If I have to like really bet on it, I'd say that we pump tomorrow. Uh, we did leave equal lows and then YM had taken... YM took all these lows already. So YM already took all this liquidity right here. Uh, so I'm thinking that tomorrow might be a shit. We could reverse this move, bro. I've seen NFP do some crazy things. Like depending on how Asia and London, honestly, I already know how Asia and London is going to play out. Asia and London don't do anything. They hardly do anything during uh, NFP week, right before NFP, because all their participants in the market wait for NFP. NFP is a very important uh, news driver and they'll wait for it. But tomorrow, what interests me are these lows right here. So what could happen? There's two scenarios that could happen here. For the news release, we take out these lows and then later we reverse back up to the upside. Okay. That's scenario one. All right. Second scenario is going to be a fake pump to the upside a fake pump to the upside. And then we start going lower to take out all these lows right here on ES as well. And possibly even YM right there, right? We got more lows on YM. Honestly, I would like the fake pump and then back down, right? To manipulate us lower. I would honestly like this scenario a lot more because if we go on the daily, 
we look like we're actually like we have a nice displacement to the downside and we have a lot of targets to target like this is a lot of low resistance liquidity on the daily and we have a ton of nice targets to look for right and if i am if i'm taking to my fibonacci and i'm going to the highest high right here we are in a premium market right now from this range right right here from the new new year range we are in a premium market so it would be nice to get this weekly candle just to expand lower and then the next week as well so we could target these two lows right there that's honestly what i would prefer tomorrow would be like a fake pump and then back down to take out these lows over here and just finish it off and and we get our our trend change for quarter two so we could target all this liquidity right here and possibly tap into the uh monthly fair value gap down here or right here this one right here i don't even think we have a yeah we do have a wick but we have the monthly fair value gap right here on yes and then order block right here in that monthly fair value gap so i'm expecting downside uh but i think tomorrow we'll get like a short-term pump uh because i don't think they're going to take out these lows right away man I, I feel like that's just too easy i feel like retail traders are probably going to try to chase shorts at open so they might get blown out first and then you know we have the real move like an hour into it just like last time right last time we had taken out liquidity and then we had reversed the whole move plus some right so that's kind of what i'm expecting uh, going into tomorrow, I, I just I don't have a concrete bias because NFP is so like unpredictable because you have clean lows, but sometimes they don't make it that easy. Sometimes they'll just pump it up really hard and then you'll think that it's going to keep going up. And the next thing you know, they reverse it. But I notice every time an NFP before the reversal, we always have some sort of SMT happen. So that's what we're going to be keeping an eye out for is that lower time frame SMT. Okay. All the time, literally all the time in NFP, if you go and back test it, there's always an SMT right before the reversal. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Plus, we have all these clean highs. I don't know. We'll have to see, man. I, I can make a case of this going up and I can make a case of this just keep going down. But, you know, it is quarter two. We could get the trend change and, uh, you know, start heading for all this liquidity over here, which would be nice. Right. That's what we've been. That's what we've been wanting for a while. Yeah, so NFP higher and then the real move back down, possibly. That's that's what I would prefer. Uh, and one more thing. This is scenario three, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay something on you guys. This is scenario three right here. So if NQ and ES decide to take out all these lows overnight in Asia and London session, I'm expecting some sort of SMT to occur at around news release, and then we pump back up and reverse the whole entire move or at least half of the move. Okay. That's scenario three. If we take out lows overnight, I'm expecting a pump up. I don't think we go lower or that much lower. I think we'll, you know, at least rebalance this four hour candle right here because this is a big drop and it was very quick. So anytime we have that, we usually rebalance it in some way, shape or form. <sighs> All right. Let me see your guys' trades. Okay. Ooh, we got a lot here. All right. All right. Take off. Okay. Take off with the oil trade. So he turtle souped oil right here in the morning. He almost got stopped, but the trade ended up working out in his favor. It's funny because oil and indices are inversely correlated. So when indices pump, oil dumps, right? And then when this, when oil pumps, indices dump. So nice trade right here bro you almost got stopped damn i don't like trading oil man oils it reminds me a lot like uh like gold my trade is in chart executions i'm on my phone okay gotcha let me go see it okay haze let's see all right haze ote smt inverse fvg took profits early was happy with them okay so this was the market maker buy model right you had that range you had that um 11 a.m open of the hourly candle turtle soup i think you had smt i guess you had smt right here you're marking it right there and then he got in on the inverse of this fair value gap so as soon as this candle was coming up and closing above this fair value gap he got in got in another one 
and then took profits along the way. Super nice trade right here. Nice execution. And it was an OTE as well. So super, super nice trade haze. Good stuff, bro. P2 is a goat. I think he, okay. Same thing. Market maker buy model. He got in over here on this one minute unicorn right there. Sweep of lows, breaker, fair value gap. Boom. He took profit when ES took the high and created the S&T. Super, super nice. I know a lot of you guys took the same trade. Same trade right here, right? Unicorn. I don't know if you guys recognize that as a unicorn, but unicorn in uh, discount OTE, turtle suit, boom, all the way back up. I think this was a fixed RR. It's 2.7. Closed early because of lunch, 1 to 2.7 RR. Super nice. Super, super nice. Uh, Yoni. Bad trade overall. I was tripping. Took this trade due to bullish SMT. Different QT plus 15 minute FEG plus one hour FEG. Entered really low because of PA and the speed to the downside. Was not expecting that drop. Watching the pre-market pump. Then nothing all day kind of fucked me up. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is where, yeah, this is where I was considering taking longs. I think me going on a drive or when I was driving actually saved me from taking longs. Uh, cause when this was happening, I was looking like I was trying to scan through the charts on my phone and <laughs> it was really hard to do. So I, I know if any of you guys trade mobile, you guys know how hard it is to do that. Trying to like look for SMTs. Like if you're scanning through individual charts on your phone, it sucks, especially when you're driving and switching apps to the discord and texting and shit's hard. But, uh, yeah, I seen that SMT happen. It was a valid SMT, bro. It, don't beat yourself up um because you took this trade right here it was valid it had all the valid reasons it had all the criteria to uh take a trade here unfortunately market decided to you know rail to the downside so plus i i, I really think it was because of the fomc speakers that's that's why uh we ended up going lower i think they said something that the market didn't like or something and we just ended up melting so it was manual intervention However, this trade had all the criteria to take along. Okay. So don't don't think it was a bad trade. Don't beat yourself up over it. All right. Uh Cola. I longed NQ with the SMT that happened at the PM session. I had my stop under a five minute FEG and turned on a one minute inverse. I should have waited for more confirmation and more displacement on the higher time frame. Yeah, so this is pretty much the same trade that Yoni took right here. Again, don't beat yourself up. Okay. The it, it was just manual intervention. There were speakers speaking that I'm pretty sure they had said something that the market didn't like, obviously, right? Because we just puked. We waterfalled down to uh, external liquidity. So this was a solid trade. Uh, maybe I would have I would have kept my stop a little bit tighter at this recent low right here because uh, it, it looks like you try to take the inverse fair value gap. So I would have had my stop below this low right here instead of all the way down here. Uh, just to to uh, decrease the risk a little bit. Uh, let's see, Rhino Chaser entered long in green box at the bottom of second candle in the FEG yellow candle in green box. I trade with Apex and can't hold into the market open, so I took profit after being in trade for an hour and thirty points plus. I took two other trades overall, up two hundred fifty dollars on ten accounts, so twenty five hundred bucks. Not a bad start to my funded accounts. Price swept sell side and dropped into a 15 minute FEG and pulsed up and retraced to a one minute FEG green box. Uh, retraced to a one minute of the range. Just noticed this was a mini unicorn. Okay, so I'm assuming you took the trade right here. Uh, swept the low into a 15 minute fair value gap, pushed up, had that one minute fair value gap was technically a unicorn yeah because you had that last uh bullish candle that makes the new low um i would use this as my breaker though this one would have been your breaker since it made a new low right there uh then you get a tap there that's where you entered and then you got out before market opened so super nice trade rhino i know you just got funded with 10 accounts on apex so nice good job bro uh saw a bullish smt between quarters this is nato which was more recent than the overhanging hyf Oh, higher time frame bearish SMT. Entered off an inverse fair value gap on one minute. Took it off before my TP when there was a bearish SMT. So, okay. So this was the, okay. So you had that. This is where the, uh, what's it called? The Q1 and Q2 90 minute cycle SMT happened. He ended up getting in right here. And then I think this was a fixed RR, right? It was like a two RR. 
You said you entered off a one minute inverse and took it off before my TP when there was a bearish SMT. Gotcha. So this is a super valid trade as well, bro. Good job. And good stuff recognizing that bearish SMT. Every time there's an SMT, just uh, you don't have to like necessarily get out, but just be aware that there could be a potential reversal. Okay. Uh, no rate cuts. Oh, is that why? Damn. That sucks. Took two shorts in the AM from FVG to FVG. This is Raymond. Then my third trade was the SMT I saw between the quarters and wrote it down to London. I had to train a client, so I just set my orders in TP. I didn't think it would waterfall so hard. Ooh, super nice, bro. Okay, so you took two shorts in the AM from FVG to FVG. And then third trade, you saw the SMT between the quarters and you wrote it down to London. Wait, this was oh, okay. Gotcha, 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 dude. This is nice, bro. Damn, nice execution up here, super nice. So this was in the PM session right here when we had the SMT with YM or YM and NQ, right? NQ made the higher high, ES did not in the lower time frames. He entered right there when he saw the SMT, and then, dude, nice, bro. You caught a very good chunk of this move, super nice. Uh, let's see. No, I do not want to swing along, bro. You don't want to do anything before NFP, trust me. Took that NQ long, exited after ES, took the highs, got off the charts to do other work, came back to see that huge dump. Okay, so this is Grant. Basically, the same trade that most of uh, the people in here took. It was that one hour or that one minute unicorn after the sweep in that new one hour candle, wrote it up, got out at the SMT with uh, ES. Super nice. All right, Harris. Look, same same trade. Everybody's taking the same trades. This is how you know shit's working, bro. Super, super nice. Okay, so that's on NQ. I've already explained this uh, trade plenty of times so you guys know why they took it. Uh, and then a inverse on CL, huh? on oil. Nice. So sell side liquidity into a daily, I'm assuming, fair value gap. And then he got in on this inverse fair value gap right there on the top of that. And then he wrote it all the way up, I think, to... A daily fair value gap, right? Super, super nice. All right, Grant. Another another trade by Grant. Also took longs overnight to clear DOL and the one hour FEG, small size up for the week before that. So wanted to try it, especially since overnight has been delivering so well. Yeah, yeah, nice. I said this in the outlook as well, right? Um, this one hour fair value gap on NQ and ES were the make it or break it. So he ended up getting in right here. And then he wrote it up to those relative equal highs on NQ. That was the target for today, which got hit early in the morning in pre-market. Super nice. Uh, Blake Moto. There was a bullish 90-minute quarter SMT. Was going to turtle soup it, but there wasn't a higher time for PDA rate, so I wasn't as confident so to take it. So I demo traded it and waited for FEG, but seen a volume imbalance, so entered in that. Okay. Nice. Uh. Where was this? Was this in pre-market? I think this was in pre-market. Yeah, this was in pre-market, right? Uh, Blake. And then this was his exits. Nice. Buy two, sell two up here. Nice. Oh, yeah, this was in pre-market. Yep. Yeah. So this was in pre-market. He ended up souping that low. Put his stop a little bit below here. Once it made that new low and started pushing up, going his way. And then he ended up getting out at this high right here, at this buy side. And then we consolidated had that other 90 minute bullish SMT right there at these lows with YM and then that ended up going. All right. Rhino, he said green box is where I actually entered. Ah, okay. Nice. Either way, bro. Super nice trade dog. Super, super nice. Go over what we should expect tomorrow going into NFP in the morning and stuff, please. I just did, bro. I'll do it again though, real quick. Like you said, your outlook, but do we play news or wait for news? Um, yeah, wait for news. You guys don't want to do anything before NFP. Trust me. You guys do not want to do anything before NFP. Do not burn your ammo before the big move comes on NFP. You guys might think, okay, this is a big-ass move already, and it is. And if you go look at uh, Thursday, right, it was the exact same thing. It was just in reverse, right? This was the last NFP week right here. Right, this was the last Thursday of the last NFP week, and look how much we went up. Pretty, pretty much the same, right? Four hundred and almost four hundred and fifty points. Okay, from Thursday's low to Thursday's high, and then this was Friday right here. 
Okay. Friday, we pumped up on the NFP news right here. And then towards 10 a.m. on the new four hour candle, we dumped about 400 points. Actually, we dumped about, yeah, about 400 points. So, again, so scenario, I got three scenarios for you take off. All right. Look, check it out, dog. So, scenario one, all right. We take out lows in the morning and then we pump. Okay. That, that's scenario one. All right. Scenario two, we fake pump during news. We, we hit maybe a break around the four hour or something. We rebalance the four hour fair value gaps or all these fair value gaps right here on the one hour, 15 minute, whatever. Uh, we fake pump basically. And then we sell off. Okay. We sell off way more. All right. That's scenario two. Scenario three is going to be, we take out these lows overnight. All right. If we take out the lows overnight, I'm looking for SMT somewhere to happen in the morning before or after news release. And then we pump up. Uh, that's really what I'm, what I'm expecting. It's one of those three scenarios that I'm thinking may happen. I don't really see any other scenario playing out. Um, maybe a scenario four could be like, we take out the lows overnight, maybe fake pump and then go lower. That could be something too. But those three are probably like the most probable outcomes. I'm thinking, bro, I'm honestly thinking if they leave these lows, I'm thinking that we fake pump in the morning and then we go lower. Okay. If we take out the lows during news release, then, then I think we push up on Friday. Okay. So I'm thinking I would like a fake pump and then down. That's what I would like. But again, if we, you know, if we just go down and we clear out lows, then we could see a pump higher. Uh, news is at 8.30 tomorrow. I'll be going live around market open. Uh, there's not much to do with news because any anytime NFP releases, you want to fade it. But again, I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into the market with that mindset because we tried doing that, I think, for FOMC and that didn't work out. So I'm not going to go into the market with that mindset. I'm just going to you know play with the chart gives. Whatever the chart is saying, we're going to play it. Okay. We're not going to be like, Oh, okay. I'm waiting for a fade or not. Uh, we're just going to play what the market gives us. I'm just going to go in with a super, super loose bias. Absolutely no bias. Actually. I'm just going to come in market open. We're going to see what happens. I'm not even going to, uh, I'll be, I'll be in chat during NFP news release and we'll see what happens together, but I'm just going to wait for market open and then we'll trade whatever happens around market open okay depending on what the profile is if it's amdx xamd is there any smts anywhere that's what we're going to go off of okay where's the draw has the lows been taken or highs you know suspect is london high asia asia low suspect like we have to wait for these structures to form okay so i encourage everybody not to do anything before news release okay because Anytime there's NFP, Asia and London really don't do anything because they want to wait for NFP because NFP is so volatile. Okay. So just wait for NFP. Um, I'll catch you guys tomorrow at market open. And hopefully, man, hopefully we fucking catch a good ass, a good ass move tomorrow. I'm going to be up in my size a little bit. And I'm also going to be trading uh, 10 50K accounts on Apex with you guys tomorrow. So I'll be trading my usual account and then 10 50K apex accounts that i'm copying right now so we'll be trading those together um and i'm gonna go really light on the size with the apex accounts probably like five micros or something so yeah the trails the trails difficult man but you know we'll get through it together so all right boys i'll catch you guys tomorrow see you guys at market open and hope you guys have a good rest of your day peace out boys laters i'll upload the recording here in a little bit too peace out